When it comes to street photography in the city, there is no better time to take photos than at night. The absence of sunlight forces you to be more creative with the artificial lights which illuminates the streets. This challenge makes you rethink the locations you photograph, the subjects you capture, and even how you use your camera. Shooting at night offers a very different set of challenges and can often be harder than shooting during the day. In my own experience, I went from shooting mostly daytimes to shooting mostly at night. So I've experienced these challenges myself. So today I'll be sharing my process when it comes to doing street photography at night. Without light, there is no photography. And at night, we are limited with the amount of light we can use to capture photos. So naturally, choosing a location with lots of artificial light will greatly increase your success when it comes to street photography at nighttime. Find locations which are well lit. Here in London, I often go out shooting in Chinatown and Soho. These are popular nightlife districts full of people, neon lights, street lights, colorful lights coming out of bars and restaurants, as well as headlights and taillights from cars. Photography is often about following and finding interesting light. So after you've come across a location which is filled with artificial light, go about searching out interesting lighting opportunities in that area. Most of my time shooting at nighttime is actually spent finding interesting lighting conditions. So for example, when I get into Soho or Chinatown, I'm walking around seeking out interesting lighting opportunities. So I'm looking for say neons on shop fronts, I'm looking for interesting colorful lights coming out of bars and restaurants, or I'm looking for subjects that are being illuminated by a street light. So it's about seeking out the interesting lighting opportunities and working those scenes to create photos. Naturally, there are less people walking the streets at night, which in turn means there are less opportunities to capture street photos. It's the reason why I often use the fishing technique at night. I find interest in light, work the scene until I find a composition I like, and then play the waiting game until the right subject walks into frame. So the fishing method is something I use both during the day and at night time. And if you're new to street photography or are shy about street photography, it's a really good method because you're not chasing subjects down. Instead, you're finding your own composition and just waiting for the right person to walk into the frame. And it's a lot less daunting because you're not going up close to people to take photos of them and people are less likely to see you and notice you. On a quick side note, if you do like the look of the photos in this episode, they were all edited using my preset pack, which is currently on sale and also help support this channel. If you're interested, I have a link down below in the description. Also, if you can hit that thumbs up button, it makes a massive difference to the channel. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe. With light being a scarce resource at night, we have to use the available light we find wisely. Using light coming out of shop fronts and office blocks is a good way to start, but also look out for reflections, if it's been raining puddles or raindrops on transparent surfaces as well. Something I really love about shooting at nighttime is how areas which can be boring and gray during the day can become really colorful and interesting at nighttime. During the day with sunlight, you are kind of limited to the types of light you capture, the color of light. Whereas at nighttime, the artificial light just takes over and there's so many more possibilities, so many different ways to get creative with that light. At nighttime, you can often find red lights or blue lights to illuminate your subject. Whereas at daytime, this is a lot harder because the light from the sun just drowns out all other light. So as winter kicks in, and the days get shorter and the nights get longer, I find myself shooting at nighttime more and more. And because of this, it's also my favorite time of the year to shoot. As there is less light at nighttime, you don't have the luxury of finding interesting opportunities on every corner. Your photographs can vary greatly depending on where you capture your subject from. 
If you capture your subject from the side, for example, a subject walking towards you and he's being lit by a shop front, then that subject will be lit by the color of the light coming from the shop front. For example, if it's red or if it's blue, your subject will be lit up with that color. Now, if you reposition yourself so the light is behind your subject, then your subject is gonna come out as a silhouette. And you can get creative with this method, capturing silhouettes. And it's a good way to do street photography without getting too close to people. And also a good way to do street photography without having any recognizable people or faces in your shots. Simplicity is the key when it comes to good nighttime street photography. You don't have to have an expensive fast prime lens either. I tend to head out with a Fujifilm X-Pro2, which is a fairly old camera at this point, with fairly slow prime lenses like the 35 f2 or the 50 f2. When it comes to settings, you often have to override your camera, as the camera aims to expose your night scenes as if it's daytime. The key point here is to find the highest ISO you are comfortable shooting with. On Fujifilm, ISO 3200 is about as high as I like to push it. Now, the lower you can keep your ISO, the more dynamic range and detail is gonna be preserved in your images. The key is to keep your ISO as low as possible while still maintaining good exposure. Another point when it comes to exposure is when taking photos at night, I tend to underexpose my images slightly. This is because as your camera tries to balance the highlights from the lights to the darkness in the background, it will often overexpose the lights. And what often ends up happening is the lights in your scene are blown out and they're very hard to edit. And it becomes really hard to change the colors in those lights when you're editing afterwards. An easy way to slightly underexpose your images is to use the exposure compensation dial. On Fujifilm, this is a dial at the top of the camera and I just move it down a few stops depending on the scene. Also, stop your aperture down all the way, so if you have a f2 lens, shoot at f2. And finally, keep your shutter speed at least double of your focal length. On most cameras, you can set your camera into a semi-auto mode, where you define what the maximum ISO is and minimum shutter speed. On a typical night out using my X-Pro2 or X-T4, I set the max ISO to 3200, and minimum shutter speed to 120th of a second. Also, you can get experimental, drop your shutter speed to about a 15th of a second or a 30th of a second, whatever you're comfortable with using, and that will depend on your camera as well. But once you drop the shutter speed, you're introducing motion blur, and with things like cars moving around at nighttime with their headlights and taillights, those can get really interesting. On a side note, do keep yourself safe when you're doing street photography at nighttime. Naturally, there are less people walking about and that can make you more vulnerable as a photographer, especially if you're walking around with expensive gear in dangerous areas of town. It's often wise to carry a small bag with you. I'm not talking about a gigantic camera bag, but just a small side bag, something where if you walk into an area where you don't feel too comfortable, you can just slip your camera into the bag. Or use a smaller camera like the X100V or Ricoh GR, where you can just slip it into your pocket. But it's always worth being cautious, and if you ever feel slightly unsafe in a certain area, just put your camera away in your bag and leave. I'd also recommend not listening to music when you're out doing street photography at nighttime. You wanna be aware of your surroundings, especially at nighttime. You wanna be able to hear what's going on behind you and to the side of you. For me, photography becomes more interesting after the sun goes down. Street photography at night can be challenging, but it's also my favorite time of the day to shoot. And hopefully with this episode, it will inspire you to get out and do street photography at night time as well.